Hello, my name is George Farmer. I'm a freelance aquascaper, regular contributor to Practical Fish Keeper magazine and co-founder of the UK Aquatic Plant Society. I'm here today to talk about the relaunch of the excellent Fluval Edge range, which has two major improvements. The first, as you can see, is this larger model, which holds 46 litres instead of 23 litres. And the other major improvement is the LED lighting. The 46 litre edge comes with 42 LEDs, three of which are blue, which can simulate a moonlight effect. I'll just show you that now. So there we've got the three blue, and then switch it over, and then all of the LEDs come on like that. And you can see they're pretty bright and should be ample for growing most plants. Okay, moving over to the 23 litre edge. The, the new edge will come with a, a similar light bar, but with 21 LEDs. And for current edge owners, they are releasing some LED replacement bulbs, which will replace the halogens, which as you can see, are also very bright and should be ample to grow most plants. The power consumptions are for the 46 litre uh, edge, uh, is 4.3 watts and for the 23 litre edge the new light bar will have a power consumption of 2.2 watts. Okay so now we're at my favourite part we're aquascaping the aquarium. As you can see it's taller than the original edge which gives us a lot more room for creativity. Uh, there is a limiting factor we've got a, a cut out here so you need to choose your decor appropriately, but I'll show you how to do that in a little while. So as you can see, there's a little bit of substrate in the bottom at the moment. I'm just going to top that up, leaving it quite deep at the back and more shallow at the front, which gives us a, an illusion of extra depth. So I'll just put the substrate in now, just pour this in. Now ideally, you pre-rinse your gravel, which will avoid any any clouding when you fill up with water. And it's always a good idea to fill up your water really slowly as well just to just to help avoid that clouding issue. So the advantage of having it fairly deep at the back is it does create this illusion of depth and it also obviously gives a lot of room for anchoring the plants. So Now we're ready to put in our wood. Uh, this is called Nano Sumatra wood and it's ideal for this sort of size aquarium and I've chosen pieces that will obviously fit into the gap at the top of the tank. Okay so I'll start off with the largest piece. So when positioning your wood you want to try and make it look as natural as possible. You don't really want to put it directly to directly central because that, that spoils the, uh, the aesthetic balance if you like. Um, in aquascaping we use a term called uh, the golden ratio or the rule of thirds and that's where you want to be putting your focal points so with that in mind we're going to position that hopefully quite nicely and obviously once you've got it all in there you can have a little bit of a tinker and, and make it look as good as possible. Okay, so now I've positioned the five pieces of Nano Sumatra wood and as you can see it looks quite natural, there's lots of spindly pieces which give the, give the aquascape a sense of scale. Um, I've tried to position the, the wood as such so it's quite nicely balanced, it's not all too central, we've got a nice line running down the aquarium like that which kind of should lead the eye across the aquascape, you know what it means. Okay so I've chosen some really attractive pebbles to go in here, um, they're, they're all natural. Um, you can see that they've got some white flecks in them which looks really nice and they look even better once they're wet so you'll be seeing that later on. So I'm just going to strategically place these around the aquascape and almost just plop them in if you like as if they were if they were there for naturally. So there we go. 
Okay, the wood has actually been pre-soaked, so hopefully it won't float up once we add water. Pre-soaking it also helps to get rid of any, any tannins which may stay in the water later on. Okay, so I'm adding the biggest pebbles first, and then what I'll be doing is adding the smaller pebbles around those larger pebbles, and that just gives that extra sense of nature. Okay, so now we're ready to add water, as I said, up to the substrate level, which makes planting much easier. So, my trusty colander goes just over the hole there, like that. And then obviously I'll be pouring the water in really slowly, which will help disperse the water, and hopefully won't, won't cloud too much. Okay, so now we're ready for planting. I've pre-prepared the plants by splitting up the pots into separate plantlets. Um, I simply get each plantlet, put them in between my tweezers, and I'm starting off with the background, and just put them in. They need to be inserted by at least an inch, really, and then you can just pull it up a little bit, just to get the roots straightened, which will Help, help start the plant off growing nicely. And just repeat the process all the way across the background. Okay, the plant is uh, Cyprus Elferi, which is, it can be quite demanding, but given the, given the right amount of light and nutrients, you shouldn't have any problem at all growing it. Okay guys, now we're ready to plant my absolutely favourite plant of all time, Cryptochorine Wendetii Brown. This is really undemanding, doesn't need much light, doesn't need any CO2. Uh, it likes to be planted in a nutrient rich substrate, but to be honest it doesn't really need it either. Um, brilliant plant and just really hardy. Here we have the pot straight from the shop. So simply take it out of its packaging, like so. Take the plant label out. Pop out the, the plant from containing the mineral wall from the pot itself. Sometimes you'll find that the root growth actually grows through the holes and, and it can make it quite difficult. So you can actually cut all the way around the pot to make removal quite easy. And then simply separate the mineral wall from the plants if you're finding it quite tricky to do that, it is actually easier to do it underwater. So in a bucket of water is, a, is an ideal way to do it. And then just break up the individual plant notes like this. Okay, so I've got two separate plant notes here. As you can see, the roots are quite long. This makes planting quite tricky with tweezers. And by cutting the, by pruning the roots right back, it also stimulates new root growth. So Get your scissors, your aquascaping scissors, which Fluval do provide. Very nice as well, nice and sharp, which we like. So print it back to about a centimetre, like so. Disc discard the old roots, and there we have a prepped plant ready to plant with your aquascaping tweezers. Right, so we've planted the background with Cyprus Helferi, we've planted the big ground with Cryptochorine Wendetii Brown, and now we're ready to plant the foreground. And we're going to be using Gostaman Helferi, which is a lovely little plant. It stays quite low, so it's ideal for foregrounds. And again, prepare the plant just as we explained earlier, in the tweezers, and then insert into the foreground. Okay, so we've filled the aquarium up with water, and as you can see, the water is nice and clear, which is really good. Um, one of the unique aspects to the Fluval Edge is its top down view. So, unlike conventional aquariums where you've got a, uh, a canopy or a hood covering it, you can actually see right into the aquarium. 
However, this does bring about uh, occasional bubbles and debris that can get trapped at the surface. At the surface, sorry. So a good tip is to get a hose cleaning brush like this and simply put it in the water and then just drag the bubbles back and into the opening. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the filter. It's a hang on the back style filter which is really good for plenty of, gives plenty of oxygen due to the nature of it being outside of the aquarium. It's three stages as well, so we've got a mechanical filter at the bottom and we've got the uh, chemical filtration in the middle which is carbon and at the top we've got the biological media which is Biomax. The, the filter pump itself is rated at 378 litres per hour so it gives almost uh, 10 times turnover which is which is pretty good. Well I hope you've enjoyed watching me aquascape this lovely Fuva ledge. For more information visit hagen.com and you can download a information sheet. My name is George Farmer, you can follow me at the Aquascaper on Twitter. You can also find out more information on aquatic plants and aquascaping by going on to ucaps.org. Finally I'd like to thank Tropica for these lovely aquarium plants and for Unipac for all the substrate, hardscape and the pebbles. Thank you, goodbye.